This is the reason why everybody thought I dropped out of high school. Over the four years of high school, I was probably in school a total of 100 times altogether. <laughs> And this wasn't because I was lazy, I mean partially, but it was mostly because I had really bad stomach problems. So I always had these doctor's appointments, I was always missing school because my stomach hurt. So then my junior year, since my attendance was really, really bad, they decided to put me on home instruction. This means that teachers will come to my house for about two hours a day, three days a week. And my teachers had to bring with them these time slips, for example, saying that they saw me from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And when I was a minor, my dad had to sign it. And when they hand in those time slips, those are the hours they're getting paid for. So I had this one teacher. She was my history teacher, but we would literally just gossip the entire time. She was mad chill. Sometimes, though, she would cancel on me, and sometimes I would cancel on her. But this was my senior year, so I was 18. So I was able to sign the time slips. So I saw her once a month when I was supposed to see her four times a month. So every time she came, I signed four time slips. I got the credit, she got the check. I grew up in a very warm and loving environment, but from what I was told, I was lucky. My sister and I had two drug addict parents who never took care of us. When my mom was pregnant with me, she smoked and got drunk pretty often, and when I was born, my sister was the only one who took care of me. When I was two months old, they left us both in a mall and left, and we never saw them again. An old couple found us and contacted the police and eventually decided to adopt us. Today I'm 19 and my sister is 34. We're really close, but I still live with my adopted family and she lives about 20 minutes away. So a couple of months ago, a friend and I took a DNA test, and that's how I found out I have an aunt in the system. I immediately reached out to her and we agreed to meet in person, all without telling my sister a thing. We tried to figure things out, so I asked her if she has a brother or sister, and she told me that when she was 13, her older sister got pregnant while being drunk with her junkie boyfriend, and a month after giving birth, she ran away with the baby after some pretty intensive fights with their parents. They never found her, but stopped looking after a year and a half. When I saw the picture, I knew it was my sister 100%. My sister is my mom. We were never abandoned. She fabricated this entire thing to my adoptive family and Story time about my extremely toxic boyfriend. So when I was in high school, I was dating this boy for three months. We're gonna call him Nick. And my friends hated him because he was super mean to all of them, but he was super nice to me. Well, after dating for about a month, he started acting super weird. Like he stopped paying attention to me. He didn't want to hang out with me. And I was going through a depression this time because my dad had just died. I wasn't really doing my makeup anymore. I wouldn't do my hair anymore. And I started gaining a little bit of weight because all I would do is sleep in bed all the time. Eat 24-7. Well, soon our two months was coming up. And he wanted to go to this party. So I literally begged him to FaceTime me. And I was asking him, oh, what should I wear? So I put on this dress that was really tight fitting, which I was already super uncomfortable about wearing because of the fact that I had a little bit of a belly now. So he picks me up, we go to this party. And I go and I start hanging out with a few of my friends. Well, one of my friends comes over and shows me something that he posted on his private story, Life for Part 2. Part 2 about my extremely toxic boyfriend. So like I said, one of my friends comes over and shows me something that he posted on his private story. It was literally a screen recording of me trying to get the dress on that was super tight fitting. And then a screenshot of my face after when I had the dress on. Because obviously I was upset that it didn't fit the way it did before. And the video said, imagine having a girlfriend that was fat as hell. Ew, I have one. And the picture of me said, ew, she's sad now. Like, what the fuck? Go to the gym and lose some weight. On his private story, which had one of my friends, and she was super pretty, and apparently he tried getting with her. That's a whole nother story. So after that, I Ubered home from the party. And as soon as I got home, I started crying and I told my older brother about it. So he literally drove us back to the party and beat the absolute shit out of my boyfriend. Well, someone called the cops, my brother spent a night in jail, and my boyfriend got an underage. And my brother won't talk to me now because I'm back with my boyfriend. Story time of how I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me with my cousin. My boyfriend and I had been together for two and a half years. His family loved me, and my family loved him, and they expected us to get married. Well, last year when COVID started, we were actually in different countries, so we didn't see each other for three months. During those three months, we FaceTimed four times a day, and we were always texting. He happened to be quarantining in our hometown, so both of our families were in the same place. I was quarantined in a different country. One day, my cousin calls me and tells me that she met a really nice guy on a dating website. I was so happy for her because she had had bad luck with guys. Every single week, her and I would catch up on the phone and she would tell me how much she liked this guy and how amazing their dates were and how amazing he was in bed, how sweet and considerate he was. I couldn't be happier for her. Well, when I finally get back home, my boyfriend is super distant and cold. So naturally, I called my cousin and complained. She told me to give him space. She said I should just leave him alone. And so like an idiot, I did leave him alone. One day, my cousin calls me and tells me to come over for dinner. When I got there, my boyfriend's car was parked in her garage. I thought it was just her nice way of trying to get us to talk. I'd walk in and catch them doing the dirty on the couch, come back for part two. 
so I walk in on my cousin and my boyfriend doing the dirty on her couch. They quickly get up from the couch and get dressed. Of course, by that time, I'm in hysterics. I'm crying and yelling. My boyfriend instantly got on his knees and begged me for forgiveness. I went up to my cousin and I punched her right in the face. She wasn't expecting that. And I said, well, this is the guy that you've been dating, isn't it? She said yes, and that she was just trying to find the best way to tell me. And so she just thought the best way to tell me was to get me to walk in on her and him doing the dirty. I punched her again. My boyfriend came to her rescue, though instantly went into hero mode, which made me even angrier, so I punched him too. I stormed out of her house and went back to my house. Well, I told my parents everything, and my dad went over to my uncle's house, my cousin's dad, and he told him everything. She was about to turn 19, so he took away her phone and her car. And I get a phone call? Part three. So my lying, cheating ex calls me and explains to me why he actually slept with my cousin. He said that he was so lonely and that he didn't know what to do, and that the closest thing to me he could find was my cousin. Right, as if that was any comfort to me. He said I should be grateful that I didn't cheat with someone else. I told him he had totally betrayed my trust and that I could never ever trust him again. And then he confessed that she was pregnant and that his parents wanted them to get married. He said he just wanted to give me a heads up. Then he said that we could still be together but just not tell anyone. So basically he wanted me to be his side piece. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of his mouth. It was like I didn't know this man. But guess what I did? I recorded the entire conversation. So I went straight to my cousin and I let her listen to it. She was so shocked. She couldn't believe that he would offer to have me as a side chick. Well, I also let my uncle listen to it. He went to my ex's house and beat him up. Honestly, that made me sad, but he deserved it. They now have a baby and he's gained 50 pounds. Trust your instincts, girl. And always record your conversations. Also, how cute are my nails? <laughs> Story time about how I found out that my mom was sleeping with my history teacher to get me better grades. So it was my junior year of high school. And everybody knows that your junior year is the most important year of high school. If you didn't, well, now you know. My brother was in his senior year of high school. And when he was a junior, he had the same teacher. So he knew how hard the class was. So he would stay up with me every night helping me to pass my history class. Well, the one day I'm at school and I'm taking a test, and I literally did not know anything on the test. And I studied the night before for literally four hours straight. So I decided to copy off the girl next to me. Well, a few days later, we get our test back. And I'm looking at mine, and I got a 97%. And then I look over to the girl next to me, she got a 33%. And then I started going through the tests. None of the essay questions look like my handwriting, but I didn't say anything because I wanted that A. Well, the one night I'm sitting down with my family having dinner and I told them that I copied off the girl next to me and how I got a 97% and she got a 33% and my brother flips out like for part two. Part two of my mom sleeping with my history teacher to get me better grades. So like I said, I told my parents that I got a 97, she got a 33. And I was telling them how the handwriting didn't even look like mine and everything. And then my brother starts flipping out. In front of my dad, too. He goes, Mom, are you fucking serious? You couldn't let her try and do this on her own? And I was super confused. Like, I thought that maybe he was talking about my mom paid off the teacher. But then he said, yeah, Dad, if you didn't know, Mom's been fucking our history teacher to get us better grades. And then he goes, Mom, you're such a fucking whore. And my mom's sitting there not even phased. She just took a drink of her wine and said, get the fuck upstairs now. Before my brother leaves the table, he goes, maybe you can fuck dad's boss too. Maybe he'll get a raise. And then I realized what was happening. And it's around 6.30 p.m. So after that, a lot of stuff happened. My dad obviously wanted to get a divorce at that point. So my dad took my brother and I to our grandparents. And we stayed with them for like two weeks. But then everybody at school found out. And we got made fun of a lot. And then after that, we moved schools. Story time, Tinder edition. Okay, the story blew up on Twitter like a while ago, but I'm just gonna retell it because it's very informational. So there was this guy and this girl and they met through Tinder and then they met up and they went on this date. And they were out at dinner and then she starts not feeling so well. And then she says, I really need to go home. And he says, yeah, I'll drive you home. And she says, okay. So then they get to her house and then she starts feeling better. So then she says, do you want to come in for some coffee? And then he says, yeah, sure. So they go inside, they have their coffee and then she doesn't feel well again. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't feel well again. I think you really need to leave. And he's like, okay. And he leaves. And then she goes to bed and in the middle of the night, she wakes up and she hears this noise down in her kitchen. And so she locks her door and she calls the cop. And the 911 operator is just on the other line saying, can you just stay on the line until the cops get there? And then the cops get there and they're like, the door is locked. Like, we don't think anyone's inside. And she's like, I promise you, someone's inside my house. I can hear them. She says, you have my permission to break down the door. So she's still up in her room and then she hears the cops break down the door. And then she hears some rustling and some fighting. Part, part two of the Tinder story. So then after the cops break down the door, they go upstairs and they knock on her door and they're like, it's okay, we've got the guy, everything's fine. And they say to her, we don't really want you to stay here tonight. We don't think that you should see what he's done. And when I say he, it's the guy that she went on a date with. And she's like, no, I need to see what he's done. So she goes downstairs and she sees her kitchen wrapped all in plastic. And there's a saw and a hammer and a knife. 
And earlier when he came into her house for coffee, he set his keys down right next to her keys. And so when he left, he picked up both sets of keys. And that is how he got back into her house. And they tested her, like her blood and everything, and she wasn't supposed to wake up because of how many drugs were in her system because on the date he drugged her. And then I guess he was just planning on chopping up her body in her own kitchen. I don't know. Stay safe. Story time. A girl named Akira Kendrick sent me the story and the background of it is that her dad was very abusive to her mother and her mother got custody of Akira and her dad was not happy about that. Anyway, so Akira was with her aunt and her cousins at her grandmother's house, all on her mother's side, and her dad stops by to say hello. And Akira's outside playing with her cousin, and her dad comes up to her and grabs her arm and says, do you want to go to Walmart with me? And at the time, she's only seven, so all she hears is toy aisle, so she says, yes, let's go. So they get in the car, they head to Walmart, she gets some really nice pom-poms, and then he says, okay, let's go back to your grandmother's house. So he starts driving and he gets on the highway, and Akira knows that her grandmother's house is right around the corner from Walmart, so he does not need to get on the highway. So she says, dad, where are we going? And he gets really mad and says, shut up sit down it does not matter so akira's in the back seat she's really scared and she just shuts her mouth so after being in the car for a while they eventually arrived at this really old abandoned beat up house and when they walk in akira sees about 25 people and she does not know any of them her dad brings her to a room puts her in a little closet throws her some toys and her pom-poms and says play part two is coming Part two of Akira's dad literally kidnapping her. So when they get to the house, Akira is really scared. She doesn't know any of these like 25 people. Her dad brings her to a room, throws her in a closet, puts some toys in there and says, play. So after about an hour of being in a little closet with some toys, she finally decides to get up and go look for her dad. So she opens the door and starts looking around and there's no one in the house. There's not even a single trace of somebody ever being there. So of course she starts freaking out and crying. She doesn't know where she is. She's so far away from her grandmother's house and she doesn't have a phone. And so eventually after three hours, she hears somebody. She looks up and her dad is standing there and he says, come on, let's go. The cops are outside. So basically Akira's aunt called the cops and they had a search warrant for him. They ended up finding her dad and they said to him, if you don't take us to her, you will go to jail. And obviously from what I just said, he finally took them to her at this random old abandoned house and they found her. And they ended up putting him in jail anyways, because why not? Two years in jail and one year on probation. Don't steal children, people. <laughs> don't.